Okay, we are having the principle of economics. And um, economics is a very interesting course. And it's a wonderful one that we are today taking our lectures in it. Um, the first individual that attempted the definition of economics is, um, we all know him, Adam Smith. And he gave a critical example and definition of economics, saying that it is a study of knowing the wealth of a nation. How do you organize the wealth, then distribute it to individuals such that they will have their desire being uh, achieved? But many other definitions have come to enable us to understand the economy as it is. The most popular, the, 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 pop, the popular one known by, uh, given by Nenos Robinson, says economy is social science. We study human behavior in relation to ends and scarcities which have alternative uses. In that, we can see a lot of breaking the, the, the breakdown of economics into different aspects of life. Now, economics is a subject that is so significant to our daily lives, individuals, group, and society. It enables us to make informed information, and that is the most important thing about economics. In order for you, again, to allocate your resources in a way that you get the maximum outcome among competing alternatives. And this is exactly what makes economics an interesting subject that an individual should always get involved with. Economy is basically broken down into two. The microeconomics and the macro. That is, microeconomics studies the, on the individual uh, level, household, economic agent. Now, we talk about economic agent, we are saying the household, firms, government, you know, individuals on a unit basis. By that, we are talking about microeconomics. Uh, macroeconomics involves aggregates. That is the other side of economics, macroeconomics. Studies the aggregate aspect of the economy. That is, the, taking the whole economy as one. And there you look at government, big activities, group of firms put together. You are looking at the aggregate behavior of these uh, 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 agents. And when we look at the definition, it tells you again that this agent behaves in a way to maximize their satisfaction and to get the utmost satisfaction from little that they will spend. So that is one of the beauty of understanding the whole aspect of economics. Going further, breaking down the definition itself as a social science, it tells you that it's not a physical science, but economics is social science. As a human being, you relate with one another, understand the behavior of how we interact just to be able to achieve you know, our, our, our daily uh, objective. And achieving this has to be you, you know, making use of little resource you have to achieve a lot. And allocation is an issue in economics. And what, what brings in the allocation issue is scarcity. Uh, without scarcity, there is no economics. Um, scarcity is the hallmark of the study of economics. If there wasn't scarcity, economics will not emerge. And this is the beauty of us getting to understand, you know, scarcity as it is. By scarcity here in economics, we simply will tell you that it involves where uh, resources tend to be less in, 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 in quantity, but not all together, because scarcity must be related to demand. 
So when the resources is not enough to meet the demand, you know, of individuals in the society, we tend to say the resource, uh, the resource is actually scarce. And it's very easy for us to understand that from the production possibility curve, which of course gives us a better way to understand scarcity. You know, when trying to solve your production possibility curve, you are at the same time trying to solve the scarcity problem. Assuming you have a capital goods, consumer goods for within that economy, so that you'll be able to uh, satisfy the production of any of these. The production possibility curve tells you that there is a boundary the economy must attain. And that boundary means that the economy is utilizing its resources at the full employment level. With that assumption clear, then of course, in producing any of these items, example, the capital goods or the consumer goods, the economy has to decide which one should I produce more. And the issue of production here is as a result of there is no enough resource to produce them in totality. So with that, you will need to what? Take an aspect of capital goods and an aspect of consumer goods. Of course, that brings into mind the issue of trade-off, uh, meaning that you cannot have your cake and eat it. Simply mean that you just cannot achieve two things act together in a more you know, adequate and uh, uh, effective way. So one has to go. So the sacrifice you have to make is the issue of trade-off, meaning that you have to let go one in order to achieve the other. And in doing this, it takes us to what we call opportunity cost. By opportunity cost, we're talking about we are breaking down the definition itself. So, since you have scarcity of resources, you need to make choices. And these choices have to be economics, economic choices. They are economic choices because you are the, at the same time spending in order to achieve this end. You are not getting them for free. So, if you are not getting them for free, then of course they become economic choices. You are spending to get them. And with that, the scarcity issue, you know, uh, where it's its heads. So, looking at it clearly, uh, talking about the PPC, the PPC have given us a better understanding of what to actually do to solve the scarcity problem. And the scarcity problem will be solved by making a choice within alternative. And that is the opportunity cost. And what is opportunity cost? Well, opportunity cost here, we say the sacrifice you make as a result of you wanting to achieve a particular uh, demand. So if I'm to demand consumer goods instead of me buying a physical uh, capital goods, for me to make more of consumer goods, I'll make sacrifice of the capital goods I'm not demanding. So what you don't, you did not get, in other words, the best alternative you didn't get that is what we refer to as the opportunity cost. It's quite different from the accounting way of looking at cost. And that is the economic way of using looking at cost. Saying that the item, you because of course you are spending only one amount, I mean 500 naira for the two items. So you don't have enough money to spend for the two. So you have to take one. Though you spend the money on the consumer goods without spending anything on the capital goods. Yet, we consider the capital good you didn't spend money on, which is the sacrifice you make as what? As the opportunity cost for the uh, capital goods that you, you received. And that's exactly the beauty of taking one item in, to leave for the other item. And this, this is where the economics is all uh, coming in all together. Now, the issue again we need to look at is Talking about the economic problem and the role it may cause in the society. Uh, basically, economic says that every nation has basic three uh, problems to solve. Uh, one of it is what to produce. 
how to produce, and even for whom to produce this output for. All of this issue came as a result of the scarcity situation that we are talking about. Now, if an economy will have, what am I going to produce? How do I produce this? These issues or these questions, we call them the basic fundamental quest, uh, problems in every society. So what to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce. This issue came because of scarcity. Now, the economy system we organize will be part of what we solve the problem. Now, looking at the way the system is going now, talking about a market system, a market system will solve that problem using price as the, the hallmark. Uh, here, we are now saying that the price of the item will determine what to produce. So, uh, eventually, you find people want to get a particular item. Maybe we want to buy a, 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 a car, for instance. Now, the modern, the, 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 the kind of car you want to buy will depend on the amount it, 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 that is involved in the market. Now, so looking at it carefully, you now begin to ask, the, the producer will say, what will I produce? The people who want to get it depend on how much you want to buy the car. So if the car is cheap, too cheap, the producer will say, I don't want to produce this kind of issue. But when the car is high, the price of the car is high, the producer will say, oh, I'll make a lot of gain from here. But the society, do they want it? Yes, they want it. So he puts the price up. In other words, the price will now determine who will get the, 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 the product. So the higher the price, it's of course, the lower may be the quantity. But again, it's because the people want the car. So how to solve that kind of problem, what to produce, now will be determined by the people what they actually would desire to, to produce based on who wants the car. So if the person wants it, if he can pay, he gets the car. By that, they solve the problem of what to produce. They now know what to produce. But who do we now produce this thing for? Is it for poor people or for rich people? For you to know whether to produce for poor or rich people, it depends, again, the method you want to use in production. Ah, what method would I want to use? Is this using a mechanical way uh, with advanced technology or maybe using it with, uh, with labor? Uh, a, typical, a typical example I like to give is when you look at washing of clothes. Uh, you have uh, people who uh, dry cleaners. They wash clothes. Uh, there are people who want to use sophisticated machine for the washing of clothes. But it will be expensive. It means those who want a good washing of clothes with the machine will have to pay higher. It means rich people will be the one to go for that particular uh, uh, product. Of, of course, the price will be high. But for those who want a cheap amount of washing of clothes, of course, you'll be using uh, labor. Some of the boys will be the one washing at the backyard. Those kind, of course, will attract low price in the market. So what to produce will now tell us for whom to, who do you want to produce it for? A rich man needs a better equipment to produce for it. So these are the issues that make you at the end of the day be able to solve the problem of uh, uh, scarcity uh, using the, the market system where price would determine what to produce. For those that can pay, we get it. Those that cannot pay will not get it. And that is one of the disadvantages we'll, uh, we'll have there. Uh, many people who in the poor society may not be able to get the product. So being the use of economics will make you to have an informed judgment of what actually to do when it comes to you know, making decisions in the entire uh, aspect of, of life in our society. In summary, we, we, we've been able to examine the, the topic, uh, the whole subject of economics. Uh, so at this point, we now know that economic have economic agent in the economy. You should understand that we have economic agent.
and who are these economic agents? They are the individuals in the economy, household, firms, government, and the society. So again, we've been able to identify that macroeconomics is divided into two, microeconomics and macroeconomics. And talking about economics, you must be able to understand the issue of scarcity. Like we said, without scarcity, there is no economics. And that has also taken us to a model that will enable us to explain it, and that is the production possibility frontier. Having looked at the production possibility frontier, it makes us to understand again that life is a trade-off. You cannot have your cake and eat it. Simply mean that you cannot achieve out, uh, the production of two commodities at the same time. Rather, one must make sacrifice for the other. And that takes us to uh, economic choice. Now, that is, you must make choice based on, you know, your, 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 the importance. And that takes us quickly, which probably we need to equally understand that the scale of preference and putting your, the, your preference in the, in the order of uh, uh, your, des your demand, your desire, in the order of uh, uh, preference, meaning that you have so many. As human beings, we have so many uh, 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 desires. Our wants are uh, unlimited, but we, our, uh, just, uh, what we want to use to to uh, to solve a problem like this scarce resources are quite limited. So that by itself enables us to understand what to do in the issue of uh, allocation of our resources. And that's the beauty of economics altogether. So with, with this, uh, we'll have some uh, self-assessment questions which would be nice for you to look at in this our study session one. And uh, it will be fine that you begin to uh, look at the definition on your own, see how to break down the uh, Nolan Robbins' uh, definition, you know, in different parts. Again, understand the focus of macroeconomics, of course, which was discussed uh, extensively in our in our discussion. And not only that, looking at the basic concept of economics, uh, talking about scarcity, looking at the uh, scale of preference, economic choices, economic uh, fundamental problems of economics uh, are there too. And from there, what are the answers in solving this uh, economic problem? Like we identified the market system, which would have given, which would give us one of the best ways to solve the economic system. So with this, all of what we need is to really get a better understanding of economics. And I hope uh, with this uh, lecture, we'll, we'll have better 